Welcome back to Grow Joyfully. Today I am in the pasture garden and I haven't been here in this garden for over five days. There's been big changes and this is like one of those treasure hunting in the garden videos. So let's get started. My husband has been working very hard on this garden in so many ways with putting down First of all, using a mattock and digging up the terrible, terrible weeds and then putting down thick bark mulch. He's weed eated and it's just looking beautiful and I really appreciate that. Let's go through and look at the tomatoes because they are exciting. We seem to be way behind a good deal of the country. As far as tomatoes getting ripe, so we're still in the setting fruit and uh, ripening up stage. They, these are far from ripening up. And it's typical that we usually get a good amount of them in September. So we will take what we can get. But here is a pineapple tomato and they all need to be tied up again and pruned. This is a Dr. Weichies. This is an old German, and we will look at this one. I'm pretty sure it's triple crop. We'll look at it on the other side. Let's see, what is this one? This is a black brandy wine. That is my first year for a black brandy wine, and I'm so excited. I can tell this is a pink ox heart right from here. Here's a mortgage lifter. Look at that beautiful one. That is a German queen. We have two Bright Lights Cosmos plants right down this row and I think it's just the perfect amount. Take a look at these over here. Beautiful tomatoes. This is a Aunt Ruby's German Green. First year for this one. There's the Roma. Okay, what's the matter with you? Turn some water on for you. It sets its fruit all at once because it's a determinant. And we're gonna have some lovely, lovely tomatoes. This one is the Ananas Noir, the black banana. First year for that. It is a triple crop, a very reliable tomato. Pink ox heart. We got a little blossom end drop, but I'm going to see if that can ripen as much as possible. And I'll just cut off that part. You can see why they call these bright lights cosmos. They're so pretty. Bring in the pollinators and raise your spirits and just help your garden all the way around. There's some pink ones right there. And there's the sun coming up. Still looking a little orangey because of the fires. Here's a delicious tomato. And a Berkeley tie-dye. Orange Russellini. There's a few more ripe of these. That is so exciting. And here's an Amish paste. The first time I've ever grown that one. Time to see if we have zucchini and I have a very strong feeling we do. There's one right there. Look at that beautiful blossom. So we have a zucchini here. And one here. And we have a little one right there. Lots of blooms. Here's one right here. I like to pick them this size a lot better. They're so tender and you can use them for anything. There's a little one right here I think I'm going to get and make a nice casserole out of. And I saw a tiny one here. Delicious size. So 
summer squash right here. Isn't she beautiful? Here's a little one here. This this pumpkin melon zucchini patch. Sorry about the road noise. It is completely grown in. It's a lovely sight. Everything's looking really healthy. If you want to grow food fast, and a lot of it, I suggest you grow zucchini. Both the yellow and the green. Blauhilde climbing pole beans. They have those beautiful purple pods. You might be getting some zucchini from this very pathetic little patch here. More Blauhilde climbing up the hoop. I have a few tomatoes blushing. Here's a Berkeley tie dye. Doesn't look very healthy. I think it's ready. Eventually, this is going to be completely full of ripe, beautiful tomatoes. I wonder how many pounds I'll get this year. There's some zucchini that we're hiding. There's one, and here's another. Beautiful. You can grate up zucchini and freeze it for zucchini bread. You can chop it up and blanch it, freeze it for casseroles. Um, you can also shred it up and dehydrate it and then um, blend it up and use it for food powder. So I would not be getting rid of these. I would be chopping them up and using them, especially dehydrating them, and then blending them up and putting away the food powder because we just may need it someday. I think this is a beautiful sight to behold. When you so lovingly plant and grow and tend a garden like this, it's very satisfying. It is so much work, but it's very satisfying. I think it's necessary for us to grow as much as we can on our own and get food put away. Because I don't know about you, but I always want to feed my family. We've had a few casualties this year for the first time. The Thorburns produced and gave me a couple of tomatoes, the earliest of any of the tomatoes, and then they've died. I have not had that happen. I don't seem to get blight here and other problems. But I've also lost a couple of um, cherry tomatoes. So I'm not sure what's going on if it's the year. And here's the Cherokee Purples. They have just had a terrible time. So each year you find something different going on, something better, something worse, and you just run with it. This plant is an indigo apple, and it's the first year I've ever grown it. I don't think they're going to be very big, but they're very pretty. I need to get going and find my chair and sit down and tie on my beautiful tomatoes. They don't seem to be quite as robust as last year. And it does make you worry, but we're going to take what we can get. There's the onions, potatoes. My daughter has planted sunflowers along here. And then the corn. I think it looks beautiful. It's starting to fill out. And the cobs, hopefully they're not too far away. The silk on this one is drying up. So it's going to be a little while longer, but it looks amazing. This is the new corn my daughter planted, and it's multicolored. I don't even know its name, but it's not ornamental. It is edible. Take a look at the, t the tassels here, the different colors they are. That's going to be fun. Hey, I got this row tied back up and pruned. We're going to have to replace this Paul Robeson. I'm very sad about that. And a flame orange. I don't know why I'm having so many plants die this year. It could be the year. It could be the new watering system. 
it could just be many things. Um, that's kind of why I plant an awful lot of tomatoes. I think it's very necessary to plant more than you can think you can use so that you can dry it, freeze it, can it, put it away. I think this year, now more than ever, we're going to definitely need our food. As we can see that prices in the grocery stores rise daily. The uncertainty of certain political events coming up. I think we just need to prepare ourselves and have a bunch of food growed and stowed. No matter what happens, take those other events out. It's just a smart thing to do. So I'm going to be pushing for you to grow all the food you can, stow it, and if you can't grow it or stow it, buy it at the store, put it away, do five cans a week at least. Um, Patera at Appalachia Homestead with Patera. She discusses these ideas several times on uh, stowing at least five cans a week. Different things you can do. Make sure you have cast iron that you can cook on in case we don't have electricity or gas and we had to make a fire outside. Just different, smart, basic things. I'm going to qualify all that by saying we need to go back to the old ways. And all you have to do is look back into your family history a little bit. Um, talk to your your mom, your dad, if you're lucky enough to still have them, grandparents. Ask them what they did, what their parents did, and really, really listen to them and try to do what they, what they said that they that they or their family members did. It's smart. I think you'll be glad someday. So that's just one little thing that I'm going to harp on a lot is growing and stowing. That's what I'm going to call it. I've got a ton and a half more tomatoes to tie up, but I'm going to take a little break, see how many of the branches and things I've cut off already. But they look a lot better. They're still really peaked this year. I've lost several plants and I don't know what's going on. I'm going to blame it on the new watering system. Either that or the incredibly hot summer that we've had so early. That'll work. Happy news. I found a healthy Cherokee purple. I think that's the only one I have this year. I am so glad. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Keep growing. It's time to wade into the melon, pumpkin, cucumber patch to see if I have any cucumbers. It's getting crazy. You turn your back for five days and this is what you get. Oh, wow. Bingo. I went to get my chair to set on while I harvest cucumbers, but I had to show you chocolate sprinkles. The best cherry or grape tomato you will ever, ever taste. And I've also got to show you this blue cream berries. Look at that. The plant is really growing like crazy and very healthy. So exciting. These new tomatoes that we put in a couple weeks ago are really finding their feet, growing roots, and looking pretty good. So maybe this will be a nice staggered harvest and we'll be able to get some even farther down the road. The pumpkin watermelon gourd uh, melon cucumber patch is quite healthy this year. Very full. There is no way we can fight our way in there to see what's growing. But that's okay because these pumpkins, uh, watermelons, what have you, they take a long time to mature and you don't have to tend to them and keep them picked like you would the cucumbers. So let's get some cucumbers picked. I'm just going to back up this truck and clip off the cucumbers and let them fall right in. This is really awesome. These are a little too big, I'm afraid, but they will be good eating. I'm determined to try to get them this size 
so that I can make crunchier pickles. Do you think it'll work? Let me know about your experiences down in the comment section below. It's time to get some of these tied up and I'll need both hands. I'm very excited about our garden right now because I'm in the shade. It's not too hot. It's only 8 o'clock, 8.30. And you can be excited when you're sitting down, resting, harvesting some cucumbers and you're in the shade and you're not too hot. Um, it's kind of hard to get excited about it when you're so hot you want to croak. But it is so much fun to be able to start harvesting and seeing the fruits of your labor, literally. Tell me what you're excited about right now in your garden. What What's growing? What are you harvesting? What's making it all worthwhile to you? I think I'll sign off here so I can get going tying up these cucumbers and go back to the tomatoes and get a lot of work done before it does get too hot. I hope you have a very lovely day. Get outside while it's nice and cool. Stay hydrated. Think in your head. Make notes. What do I need to do today towards prepping food storage and self-sustainability? Because whether any political world weather event is going on, you're just being smart by growing and stowing, putting things away, reading and learning on how you can take care of you and your family. So I just want to wish you a lovely day and hope that you get outside in your beautiful gardens and grow joyfully. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.